Have you been diagnosed with a unicorn in your uterus and wondering what this means for your fertility and pregnancy risks? You might have heard of some uterine anomalies like a bicornuate uterus, a septate uterus, or an arcuate uterus, and curious if these could be the cause of your infertility and miscarriage problems. Today, we are going to cover unicornuate uterus. Not unicorn, <laughs> does sound like that, but unicornuate uterus. We're going to talk about exactly what it is, how common it is, diagnosis and treatment options, and most importantly, what it can mean for your fertility and pregnancy risks. Welcome to Brave and Curious, the podcast that does a deep dive into fertility, reproductive health, and wellness with science and compassion. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist, and I love staying brave and curious with you. Today, I am curious about unicorn in your uterus, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you everything that we know. Today, we're going to talk about a really interesting topic, a unicorn in your uterus. I was inspired to cover this topic because I saw a TikTok by the famous influencer, Selena Speakyboo. You have probably seen her. If you don't follow her, 28 million people follow her on TikTok and 3 million follow her on Instagram. And she has done an amazing job of sharing her fertility journey. And she recently posted this video answering some questions about her journey. She talks about how she has a unicorn uterus. And I was so surprised. I mean, this is something that I've definitely helped in my own practice and help patients with, but I'm just so thankful that she's been so open about her journey and sharing that she has this uterine anomaly because I have been flooded with people sending me this TikTok or whether it was on Reels on Instagram and saying like, hey, I have a unicorn uterus. Can you please do an in-depth you know, information, educational video, or in-depth episode on your podcast about this really important topic because it impacts me. And I said, yes, that is great. This is something that is really important to cover. Although it's not overwhelmingly common to have a unicorn in your uterus, when you do, you want to learn as much as you can about this topic. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to go over six main topics. Topic number one, exactly what a unicorn in your uterus is. Topic number two, how common it is. Topic number three, diagnosis. How do you know if you have one? Topic number four, impact of a unicorn in your uterus on fertility. Topic number five, impact of a unicorn in your uterus on pregnancy outcomes. And topic number six, treatment options. Now stick around to the end of the video where I give you really important questions to ask your doctor if you get this diagnosis to help you advocate for your care. So topic number one, what is a unicorn in your uterus? It is a rare, but not that rare, uterine anomaly. It's meaning that the way the uterus formed when that person was in utero as an embryo, the way the uterus formed didn't form into a typical shape that you see in anatomy books, but it only formed one half of the uterus. And the way I explain it to patients is we actually... We, meaning I have a uterus, so if you have a uterus, the way it forms <laughs> is it actually is formed in two separate uteruses. And I'm, I always do this with my patients when I'm describing any kind of uterine anomaly. I use my hands. So we start off with two separate uteruses, two cervixes, and like the fallopian tubes come off the top and they kind of are close to the ovaries. We start off with two separate uteruses, and then they come together, and there's a little fibrous band in the middle that goes away. And that is how the normal shape of the uterus or the most common shape, I hate the word normal, is formed. But there can be uterine anomalies across at any time. So there are people that are born with completely two separate uteruses, two cervixes, two vaginas, like two completely separate reproductive tracts. There are other people that are kind of born with two uteruses, but maybe one cervix or people have what's called a bicornuate uterus where... There's just kind of like a heart shape or a dip at the top, or some people have something called a septum where the final stage where that fibrous band doesn't go away. So at any part along this amazing formation of the uterus can get disrupted and you can have uterine anomalies. Now for a unicorn uterus, it's not even just that. There's many different types of unicorn uterus. So there are four main types of unicorn uterus, and let me explain them. There can be basically just one side of the uterus developed and the other side completely did not develop. That's called no horn. There's no like little small remnant, just one 
kind of, they call it um, a banana shape often if you're looking at an MRI or something like that, just looks like kind of one side of the uterus was formed. And then the other three types, there is a little remnant of the second side of the uterus or the unicornate side. It's smaller, it's underdeveloped, but there's three main types of that. There's one that's communicating, meaning that there is a uterine lining in that little remnant and it builds up and it sheds and it kind of comes out of the body with menstrual cycles. That's a communicating unicornate uterus. One side's just underdeveloped. The other can be underdeveloped side, non-communicating. There's no uterine lining. It's not really functioning. It's just sort of like a little remnant. And the fourth kind, and this is important to know because this can cause symptoms, is a non-communicating remnant of a little horn. So you've got like the big side that's acting like a typical uterus, building up with the lining and shedding. And then you have this little unicorn remnant, but it's actually got active endometrial lining. And that can build up you know, lining and blood, but it has nowhere to exit. It's not communicating. It's not coming out of the body. And that can cause symptoms of pain as people are menstruating. And that's something that people could be diagnosed early in life because they're having symptoms. Other people might not get diagnosed until later in life, sometimes never because they have no reason to have imaging of their uterus or there's no fertility or pregnancy problems. There's no symptoms. So you can have symptoms and get a diagnosis or maybe not, but this is what a unicorn uterus is. It's a um, uterine anomaly. It happens while we are being formed inside our mom's womb and there's different types. Topic number two, how common is it? It's actually pretty rare. It only impacts about one in 1,000 people with a uterus that we are aware of. There, you know, it's hard to diagnose because as I talked about in the first topic, some people have symptoms that lead to a diagnosis. Other people don't have symptoms. And if they have no reason to have imaging of their uterus, some people might not even know that they have it. And so this is our best guess. Our best estimate is one in 1,000 people will be born with a unicorn uterus. Topic number three, how is it diagnosed? Usually with imaging. So if someone has symptoms and they find out that from imaging that they have it, great. Or somebody's having imaging for some other reason and it happens to be discovered when they do a pelvic MRI or pelvic ultrasound. Or people are having an evaluation for fertility or in pregnancy and it's discovered that way, but it's usually imaging. This is a typical test done, especially in a fertility setting. So if someone is not getting pregnant, people often have imaging. Sometimes it's an ultrasound, oftentimes combined with a hysteroscopiogram to make sure that the inside of the uterine cavity is nice and normal and both fallopian tubes are open. You can see a unicorn uterus with an MRI, but I think the images are much clearer with a 3D ultrasound or a hysterosalpingogram, kind of putting it into context. Sometimes people are diagnosed at surgery. Sometimes people have surgery for whatever reason, a laparoscopy. And if the uterus is, is examined, people will say, oh, the this is not a normal uterus. We actually only have one side that's available, or they might see a little remnant of a unicorn uterus like we discussed earlier. We're going to get back to learning more about unicorn uterus and what this means for fertility, but I want to take a second and thank you for being here. Your engagement means so much. It helps others find the show. So take a minute and follow the show wherever you're listening and give us a review. Five stars is amazing and a little bit of information about what you find valuable or what you'd love us to cover in the future. Let us know. Now let's get back to learning. Topic number four, how does having a unicorn uterus impact fertility? A unicorn uterus can present as fertility challenges, but not always. There are people that have, get pregnant easily and have beautiful babies with a unicorn uterus. It is not an absolute that you will have fertility or pregnancy challenges if you have a unicorn uterus, but it can happen and it can come up in a fertility evaluation and should be explained and discussed given the patient's personal situation. There is one study by Chen et al. that was published in 2018 that did look at over 3,000 patients with a unicorn uterus and did find that about 23.7% percent of the time, those patients had fertility challenges. So that shows you not everyone with a unicorn uterus will have fertility challenges, but in this particular study with a really good number of patients, they found about a 23% risk of 
fertility issues. You know, why would someone have fertility challenges with a unicorn uterus? Hard to know for sure, but theories include that maybe the uterine lining isn't building up thick enough to allow implantation. There could be some sort of implantation issue or uterine issue with the communication between the embryo. There is some evidence in some studies that show a slightly higher risk of an ectopic pregnancy if someone has a unicorn uterus or other uterine anomalies. That's a pregnancy within the fallopian tube that is not viable, cannot continue to grow, and that can absolutely be a fertility challenge, especially if that's happening over and over again. Other patients can present with recurrent miscarriage, and they can find a unicorn uterus within their evaluation. And the thought is, is that maybe that, that uterus is a little bit underdeveloped and is not able to sustain a pregnancy for much longer than the first trimester. So the influencer, Selena Speaky Boo, that I mentioned at the beginning of the um, discussion, she was answering questions about her fertility journey in that content. And she said, that she's actually using a gestational carrier or a surrogate because she has a unicorn uterus. I do not know her whole story. I am not her doctor, but I just want you to realize that not everyone that has a unicorn uterus will need a gestational carrier or a surrogate. I just want to really make sure that that is clear. Not everyone will have fertility challenges. Not everyone will have recurrent miscarriage. Um, but in that content, Selena Speaky Boo, it sounds like her journey is going to be through a gestational carrier. And I'm just wishing her the best on her journey. Topic number five, what are the pregnancy risks with a unicorn uterus? What you worry about the most is miscarriage, preterm labor, maybe growth restriction or small for gestational age for the baby and some placental complications like placental abruption or inability for the placenta to fully grow if someone has a unicorn uterus. Now, all of these do not happen for everyone that has a unicorn uterus, but if someone has a unicorn uterus and they do conceive, this could be something that your doctor is talking to you about. You might have more ultrasounds in pregnancies to watch the growth of the baby closely, and it's just something that might be considered. Your doctor might have you have a consult or even be followed by a high-risk obstetrician in your pregnancy, but again, not always. There are people that have had full-term, gorgeous pregnancies and deliveries with no complications with a unicorn uterus. I have personally diagnosed people with secondary infertility and found a unicorn uterus. So these are people that had a baby or even two babies before, and then they're struggling to conceive. And I find that they have a unicorn uterus. I do not think that that particular issue is causing their issues with fertility because they already had a live birth uh, term pregnancy. But so just giving you lots of different perspectives, I want, I do think it's important to understand the risks, but also really take it into context. So there is one study that specifically looked at risks of preterm labor. This is by Chan et al. It was published in 2011, and it found that up to 50% of pregnancies with a unicorn or uterus did have preterm delivery. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they all had long-term issues because preterm just means being delivered at less than 37 weeks gestation. So I think that there is a higher chance of being delivered early or going into preterm labor early, but that doesn't necessarily mean any long-term issues for the baby or the health of the mom. Topic number six treatment. How can a unicorn uterus be treated? While the uterus itself cannot be fixed, and I put that in air quotes, you can't surgically make a unicorn uterus into a full functioning uterus. There are some instances where surgery is indicated. So remember when I talked about the different types of unicorn uterus, and there's one that is a non-communicating unicorn uterus. This is the type of unicorn uterus that can present with pain with periods or pain in general as that fluid, the blood, the menstrual flow is building up in that non-communicating horn of the uterus because it has nowhere to escape. And so in that case, patients will often get a laparoscopy and have that horn removed to help decrease the pain and the symptoms that they're having. There are some of my patients that have used IVF to help with conception. Sometimes there's some anatomical reasons why they're not getting pregnant. And so sometimes you can use IVF. IVF 
to get the eggs out of the body, create embryos in the lab with sperm, and then when the embryo is ready, place it into the unicorn uterus to conceive. Or sometimes, like the influencer Selena Speakyboo, she is using IVF to get eggs out of the body, create embryos in the lab, and then transferring the embryos to a gestational carrier to help build her family. Another treatment or intervention is if someone is pregnant with a unicorn or uterus, they are often followed closely in pregnancy, like we talked about, looking for signs of preterm labor, making sure that the baby is developing and growing appropriately, um, looking for any sort of placental issues, so they could be followed closer in pregnancy. I want you to be able to advocate for your care. If you get this diagnosis, here are some questions I recommend that you ask your doctor. I can think of five questions. Number one, how will a unicorn or uterus impact my fertility? It may and it may not, but it's important to get a consult in your personal situation. Question number two, are there any additional tests that I should get? Unicorn or uterus or any uterine anomalies can also be associated with anomalies or irregular development along the urinary tract. So sometimes people who have a uterine anomaly, whether it's unicorn or uterus, bicornuate, delphus, et cetera, they can also have duplicating ureters, sometimes a missing kidney. So lots of different issues along the production of not only the reproductive tract, which is the uterus and the ovaries and the tubes and the cervix and the vagina, but also the urinary tract, like the kidney and the ureters and the bladder and outflow. So sometimes people will get additional testing of their urinary tract after they are diagnosed with a uterine anomaly. So ask about that. Question number three, what are their treatment options if I want to conceive? Question number four, what steps should I take to ensure a safe pregnancy? Question number five, should I have a consult with specialists, like a fertility specialist, like a reproductive endocrinologist like me, or a high-risk obstetrician like a perinatologist or a maternal fetal medicine doctor to talk about monitoring and guidance in pregnancy. So in conclusion, we have learned so much about a unicorn uterus. I hope this was helpful. It can be an overwhelming diagnosis at first to learn, oh my gosh, I have an anomaly. I was born this way. What does this mean for fertility, miscarriage, pregnancy? It can be overwhelming, but I hope that the information that you got here today will make you more knowledgeable and help you advocate for your care. And I really want to emphasize, even though we've talked a lot about some scary risks you know, with fertility challenges or pregnancy challenges, that doesn't mean that that's going to happen in your personal situation. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you're taking away valuable knowledge that can really help you in the future. Thank you to my team at Audiotocracy for producing another incredible show. And thank you for being here today. I so appreciate you showing up week after week. Be sure and follow the show wherever you're listening and take a moment to give us a review with a little bit of information about what you find valuable and what do you want us to cover next. This is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, and until next week, stay brave and curious.